Hello, second grade smarties, and welcome to Wit and Wisdom Module 3, Civil Rights Heroes Lesson 16. Today, we are going to be exploring what is a deeper exploration of point of view in the text, Ruby Bridges Goes to School, My True Story. So in the text, Ruby Bridges Goes to School, My True Story, who is telling the story? Tell me in the uh, puzzle. Ruby Bridges, right? So Ruby Bridges is the author of this book, but she is also telling the story from her point of view, from first person point of view. So what are the kind of words that she used to let you know as a reader that she was the one telling the story? Tell me in the uh, puzzle. She used words like I, my, us, we, she was talking about herself. So when she was talking about herself, she would be talk using pronouns. She would be using pronouns about herself as, as the author, as the narrator of the story, right? And we've talked about how this is a narrative text. This is a text from first person point of view. This text is about a person's story, Ruby Bridges' story. So today, we are going to be talking about Ruby Bridges' point of view in the event of her walking to the France school for the first time. So we are going to be making a scape chart together in preparation for our writing task in writing a narrative. We are going to be writing a narrative from first person point of view, but we are going to be writing like we are Ruby Bridges. We are going to be writing from first person point of view. All right. But before we make that scape chart, I am going to sing you a song. And as I am singing this song, I want you to think about the repetition that you hear. Okay. All right. Here we go. This song is called This Little Light of Mine. This little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. This little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. This little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. Every day, every day, every day, every day, I'm going to let my little light shine. Everywhere I go, I'm going to let it shine. Everywhere I go, I'm going to let it shine. Everywhere I go, I'm going to let it shine. Every day, every day, every day, every day, I'm going to let my little light shine. Deep down in the south, we're going to let it shine. Deep down in the south. We're going to let it shine deep down in the south. We're going to let it shine every day, every day, every day, every day. I'm going to let my little light shine. All right. So that was the song, This Little Light of Mine. What are some things that you noticed about the repetition in the song? What were some words that were repeated over and over again? Tell me in the puzzle. So words that we heard over and over again, I heard little light shine over and over again in every verse. So every chunk of the song, we heard the word shine. We also heard the words every day. And in each verse, we heard the words every day four times. So when should we let our light shine? Every day. Why do you think the last line, I'm going to let my little light shine, why do you think that was repeated in every verse? Why do you think that was repeated? Tell me in the ad puzzle. So I think this was repeated to help the listener get it stuck in their brain, right? They're going to remember that the message of the song is to let your light shine, to let yourself shine no matter what, right? No matter what happens, you are going to shine. 
So what is something that you think the writer of the song was hoping for? What do you think the writer of the song wants the listener to know? What lesson does the writer want you to know? What are you thinking? Tell me in the ad puzzle. So for me, I think this song is to encourage us, to give us hope, to keep going, to keep that growth mindset. Don't let that light go out, right? Your light is your thoughts, your feelings, your talents, your abilities, your bravery. Those are all examples of your light. And let that light shine. Don't let people blow it out. Don't let that light go away. All right, so we are going to be seeing that song again. And the next time you see that song, we're going to be singing it, singing it together. So get excited. All right, so I told you a few minutes ago that we are going to be writing a narrative from first person point of view. We are going to be writing from Ruby's first person point of view. So in our writing, we're going to use the words I and me and us and we. I want you to think, though, how is this text similar to the I have a dream text that we read? How is the point of view similar to Dr. Martin Luther King's I have a dream text? How are those those two texts similar? Tell me in the ad puzzle. So in the I have a dream text, Dr. King is the one talking, right? He says, I have a dream that one day my children, my four little children will not be judged by the color of their skin, right? Dr. King is talking about his dream, his dream from his point of view. He uses those words that belong to him. So as we are reading this text, as we are exploring this text, we are going to put ourselves in Ruby's shoes. What does that mean? We are going to be seeing things from the inside of her heart and the inside of her mind. We are going to know what she was experiencing and how she was feeling from her own words. So what we are going to do is we are going to be thinking about how Ruby thinks and looks at the injustices she faces. How does she feel and how does she respond to injustice? Let's look at this text, this page in the text. I want you to think, what is one word to describe how Ruby responds to injustice? I loved Mrs. Henry, and Mrs. Henry loved me. I was a very good student. I learned math. I learned how to read, but I wish the children would come back. What's a word that describes how Ruby responded to the injustice of people not coming to school because of the color of her skin? How did she respond to that? Tell me in the ad puzzle. She kept coming, right? She kept coming to see Mrs. Henry. She kept learning math. She kept reading. But what did she hope for? She hoped that kids would come back. But did she give up even though she was alone with Mrs. Henry? No. She was brave. She was courageous. She never gave up. So here is what we are going to be doing. We are going to be zooming in on the day that Ruby Bridges goes to the France school for the first time. So what we are going to do is we are going to make a scape chart. So on the screen, you see an example of a scape chart. You are going to need a piece of paper and you are also going to be making a scape chart. The text event is Ruby goes to school, goes to France school for the first time. So Ruby 
Ruby's first day at school. So it's her first day at school. This is the day that she is walking to school. So I am going to give you guys a second to make your escape chart. We are going to remember a escape chart. That's going to help us organize these story elements to write a narrative. So we are going to be looking for the setting to write here. We're going to be looking for the characters, the actions of the characters, the problem that the character faces, and the resolution or the ending. All right, so make your escape chart, and then we are going to start by looking at the setting. We're going to start by exploring what the setting is on this day. But there was a school for white children even closer to my house than the school for the black children. It was the William France Elementary School. The government said Ruby Bridges should be allowed to go to the William France School. In 1961, I was in the first grade. My mother took me to the France School. Marshals came with us to make sure we were safe. All right, we are going to pause for a second. In the setting, what year does this take place? Look back at the text. What year is our setting? 1961. So I'm going to make a dot and I'm going to write 1961. That is the year that this took place. Where is Ruby and her mother? They are at the France school. So the so we are going to say France France school. That is the setting. Who are the characters that we have learned about? Look back at the text. Who are the characters that are in this event? Go ahead and write the characters from this event. So I'm going to write them as well. All right. So we know that in our, in this part of the text, so far we have been introduced to Ruby Ruby's mother and the marshals. We are going to have another group of people that we are going to see here in a second. Some people did not want a black child to go to the white school. They stood near the school. They yelled at me to go away. What do we call a group of violent people? What is that called? a mob. So another character that we need to add is the angry mob, right? We need, we need to add the angry mob because they are a part of this event. Angry mob. So far, we have our settings and our characters. What is an action that Ruby has done so far? What has she done so far? She is walking to the school. So Ruby walks into the school. What is the problem? What are people doing? What is the problem? Go ahead and write the problem that is happening in this event. I'm going to write it as well.
So the problem was that people are yelling at Ruby to go away. And they were yelling at her because some white people did not want a black child in a white school. After this page, what do we learn about Ruby? What happens? Does she run back home? People are yelling at her as she's walking up to the school. Does she just run back home with her mom? No. What happens at the end of this event? What does she do? Ruby walks into the school and who does she meet? Mrs. Henry. So the ending of this event, the resolution is that Ruby walks into the school and meets Mrs. Henry. So, Smarties, if you are one of my second grade Smarties, I need you to keep your skate chart because it is going to help you with your writing. If you are one of my Smarties, you are going to be sending a picture of your skate chart to me. But let's check to make sure that we got all the things that we needed. All right, so the setting of the story. We put 1961 in the France school. We could also add to our setting that it was on the street and that they were walking up to the school building. The characters, we put Ruby, Ruby's mother, the marshals, and in Wit and Wisdom, they said crowd of angry people. We wrote angry mob. All right, the action was that Ruby was walking to the new school, the white school. Ruby walks, ooh, we're going to say walks to. I'm going to cross out into because she hadn't got into the school yet. So she walks to the school. Ooh, and we could also add that adjective white school. So look at what I did, Smarties. I am adding to this. I want to make sure that this chart helps me do my best writing. So I wrote white school right there. The problem is that crowd, the crowd does not want her to go to the white school. They are yelling at her and they are holding signs. We said that in our problem too. And the ending, Ruby makes it into the school and has her first day of school. Did we write that for the ending? Yes. She walks into the school and meets Mrs. Henry. All right. So Smarties, you are going to need to keep this chart. It is going to help you when we start our narrative writing for our focusing question task number three. So keep this in a safe place. You're going to need it soon. All right, Smarties, and let's wrap up today with a deep dive. So today we are going to be talking about vocabulary words and word relationships. So I am going to read a sentence and we are going to have to decide which word is going to fit best in this blank. I have a dream today, Dr. Martin Luther King Jr blank. Dr. Martin Luther King Jr., did he mumble? I have a dream today. Did he mumble that? Did he announce that? Or did he scream it? I have a dream today! Which word would fit best right here? How did Dr. King say that sentence? Did he mumble it, announced it, or screamed it? Which would be the best action word to put in this blank. Tell me in the puzzle. So I would say that announced would be the best, right? Because he was speaking very passionately, but he wasn't screaming, right? He was very calm. He was very peaceful, but he also didn't mumble. If you mumble, that means that you're not speaking up and it's really hard to hear you, right? So he announced that he had a dream. He announced his speech. What kind of words are the words in parentheses? Hmm. What is the name of an action word? What kind of word is an action word? Tell me in the puzzle. Verbs. Verbs are action words. And 
I notice that all of these action words end in ed, but what kind of action words are these? These all describe how Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. could speak. These are different words that have a similar meaning, right? They're all different ways that someone can talk or speak. When you mumble, you're talking or speaking, but you're saying it really quiet and it's hard to hear. When you announce something, you are speaking, you are talking in a clear manner. And when you scream, you are talking in a loud manner. These are all words that describe how someone can talk, right? So when we are talking about shades of meaning, word relationships, authors choose words to help the reader understand how the subject of a sentence is doing something. Action words can have shades of meaning. So that means that verbs or words can range from meanings that are very weak to really strong. In the case for do that sentence with Dr. King, mumbling would be the weakest way of speaking, right? It's the quietest way. But screaming would be the strongest way of speaking, right? They have different meanings. They help a reader paint a picture. So let's say we all have words that have a similar meaning, but some words have stronger meanings than other. So for example, if I was talking about Mr. Ma Ooh, let's say this, I'm talking about my cats and I'm talking about how I feel about my cats. Which would be the weakest meaning that I enjoyed my cats, that I loved my cats, or that I liked my cats. Liked. Liked would be the weakest meaning, right? So I like my cats, but that isn't a good way to describe how I feel. The next strongest word would be enjoy. I enjoy my cats, but the strongest would be loved. I love my cats. Loved is the strongest word that tells how I feel about my cats. Liked would be the weakest. That's not a strong feeling. Love is a strong feeling. So let's practice that. I have three words that all have the same meaning. We have to choose which one is the weakest meaning, a middle, it's kind of between weak and strong, and the strongest meaning. So weakest, strong, strongest. So let's say I, I am talking about a math problem, and I am trying to describe my knowledge about this word problem think. I think I know the answer. I know the answer. Or I believe I have the answer. Which one would be the weakest? If I am showing my knowledge, which one is the weakest? I think I know. I know. Or I believe. Which one is the weakest? Think, right? If I think something, I might not know. I, I'm guessing. I think I know. I'm not confident. So we would say that think is the weakest. What would be a stronger word? I know or I believe I know. Which one would be the next strongest? Remember, we're talking about the knowledge that we have. Believe would go next. I can believe something, but I might not be 100% right. But if I know something, I am 100% confident. So the weakest was the word think. A stronger meaning would be believe and know. All right, let's test your knowledge with this last one. All right, I am talking about how I move now. Which one would be the weakest meaning of move? Walk, speed, 
or hurry. In the Ed Puzzle, I want you to tell me which of these words has the weakest meaning of moving. Tell me in the Ed Puzzle. Walk, right? If I'm walking, that's a slow way of moving. Okay, which one would go in the middle? Which one is a stronger meaning? Speedy or hurry? Which one would go in the middle? Tell me in the Ed Puzzle. If I hurry, that means I'm moving faster, right? If I hurry to get somewhere, that means I, I am trying to get there quickly. What's the strongest meaning of the word move? Tell me in the Ed Puzzle. Speed, right? If I speed, I am moving as fast as I can. So let's think about this. If I walk, that's the weakest meaning, right? I'm going, I'm going slowly. If I hurry, I'm walking a little faster. But if I speed, I am walking as fast as I possibly can, right? So word relationships. Different words can have similar meanings, but they can either have weaker meanings or stronger meanings. Authors use those meanings of words, those strong meanings of words to help readers paint a picture in their head. All right, Smarties, that is going to be it for today's lesson. Remember to keep that growth mindset. Good learners do hard things. And I will see you soon for another lesson. Happy learning, Smarties.